Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're starting a new week with this beautiful day. And thank you, God, for this opportunity to be with you in our daily devotion. Now, I hope God bless us this week. We have lots of encouraged words to share with you. And uh, our hearts are totally open for the Lord to move this morning in your life through the devotional. So today we have Nicky Brown, one of our elders. He will be sharing with us. And Jackie Elmore bringing amazing song. So today, <clears throat> we, I would like to spend some time praying as you know, for this uh, situation happening in the U.S., also in the U.K., especially in London. So uh, just uh, thinking and praying for God's protection, not just about now for the coronavirus, but much more about this situation, what is going on. So I was reading here in Revelation chapter 7, from verse 9, which says, uh, John, reading uh, Revelation, he says, He saw a great multitude. He could not count from every nation, tribal, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. So, Jesus died on a cross. This is our affirmation. Jesus died on a cross for everyone. Doesn't matter color, doesn't matter nation, doesn't matter anything. Jesus died on a cross for the world. The word in the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16, means people. People from everywhere. And racism is not biblical. We know that. So, but we have to pray for peace. We have to pray for people understand we are equal before God and we need to support each other in our community. So I would like to start our devotion now, just praying, asking God to bless. You join us, please. Bring, Lord, peace to our nation, to U.S., to the world. So, Lord, we surrender what is happening at the moment in you. We know, Lord, biblically, your plan, your purpose for every nation, for every everyone in this world. We know you want you to save, we know you want you to bless people, and we pray for peace in the US, we pray for peace in the UK, we pray for reconciliation, we pray for revelation, for understanding. We are equal before you, Lord. So we need to support each other as brothers and sisters in our society. I pray, Lord, for you to bless us and stop the enemy who is trying to create some uh, uh, um, uh, a war in, in terms of people fighting against each other. So, Lord, we proclaim you are the Prince of Peace, bring peace to the world. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. So, yeah, let's, let's start here with, with uh, Nick sharing uh, his word with us. Good morning. If you're of a certain age, in other words, to put it less politely, old enough, like me, you'll remember a time when school days at every school in the country began with assembly and a regular part of assembly every day was singing a hymn. I think this changed from my perspective sometime in the, in the early 1980s and now uh, most schools except church schools uh, don't have assemblies like this and don't sing hymns at all. One of the hymns we used to sing when I was at primary school that I remember was uh, the hymn Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, 
God in three persons, blessed Trinity. It's a hymn written by uh, Reginald Heber, who was a, a hymn writer, um, actually he was a poet. Uh, he was rector of a, a church near Shrewsbury for 15, 16 years, and then he became Bishop of Calcutta in 1823, which effectively at that time meant Bishop over the whole of British India. He was only in India for three years because sadly he died at an early age, 43 years old, of a stroke. Uh, and it's said that he died of exhaustion, traveling around India, supporting the missionaries, planting churches. And uh, this hymn he left behind with many other hymns. It's thought most of his hymns were written while he was a rector in near Shrewsbury. Um, and it wasn't actually put to a tune until many years later, until 1861, when it was given the tune that, uh, that we're familiar with. Now, it's made me think, what does it actually mean? This hymn kind of got a new lease of life in the 70s and 80s when Keith Green uh, recorded an updated version of it. But, but what does it mean to say that God is holy? Well, we know in scripture that uh, God is talked about as holy. One of the most famous passages is in Isaiah chapter 6, where as Isaiah has a vision of God in the temple and he sees God on a throne, he sees seraphim flying around him. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, he tells us that they're calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. That got me to thinking about what do we mean by the word holy? Actually, I, I've discovered that we can't really fully define it. Just as we can't fully define God because he's so big and so wonderful, it's very difficult to really define what holy means. But here are some words that are often used as definitions of holy. Set apart, unique, morally and spiritually perfect, righteous, just, sinless, pure, truthful, loving, good, excellent in every way. All of these are included in the meaning of the word holy and all of them describe something of what God is like. I particularly like um, the definition of set apart, different. God is different to us. God is set apart from us. Um, Wayne Gruden talks about holiness as meaning set apart and he gives us his examples, the fact that the tabernacle had two chambers called the holy place and the holy of holies. And he says they were called that because they were set apart from the sin and evil of the world as places to encounter God. Likewise, when God uh, initiated the Sabbath day, he said that the Sabbath day was to be holy, meaning it's set apart from the normal day-to-day -day activities. It's different from everything else. And it said it was to be a day dedicated to God. So I like the idea of, of thinking of the word holy as being set apart, different. And God is set apart. He is different to us. In fact, to, to use a, a bolder word, you could say that God is superior to us. He is superior to us in his power and his authority, what he is able to do. But he is also superior to us in his um, excellence, in his purity, in his perfection, in his justice, in his goodness, in his righteousness, in his love. He's different to us. I think this is quite a good and important um, concept to get hold of, because as human beings, very often we fall into the trap of trying to judge God by our own standards, saying, you know, well, God should do this because I think he should do it. To my mind, this is what God ought to be doing. But God is different to us. In fact, further on in the book of Isaiah, we're told exactly that. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, God says, For my thoughts 
are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I think this has relevance to us in a time like this. Uh, people are asking, well, why, why is coronavirus happening? Why is the world shut down? Why have we all been isolated? What is God's purpose in this? Well, actually, I don't know. But what I do know is that God's ways are higher than my ways. I know that God has a purpose in it and I trust him. When I was a, an enthusiastic young Christian in my 20s, I can remember being um, desperate to find out what is, what is the answer to this and what is the right thing as a Christian? I should be thinking about that. As I've got older, though, that's become less important, really, because I understand that actually I don't know the answer to everything. And I cannot understand the, the right thing to think about every issue doesn't mean that I should be lazy and, and give up trying to do that. But it means that, that I can rest much more happily by saying, actually, I don't know. I don't understand in that area what I should think about that. I don't understand why God has allowed this worldwide pandem pandemic. But what I do know is that it's far more important to know and love God and to trust him than to have the right answers for everything. You know, I often think that uh, the Pharisees in the time of Jesus uh, were people who, who knew everything, at least they thought they did. They knew the Bible. They knew what the Messiah was going to be like. They had very fixed, clear ideas that they could justify from Scripture and probably argue us out of the park. But their ideas were so fixed that when Jesus came, they missed it. They, they didn't realise that he was the Messiah. He didn't fit their fixed ideas. And I think there is a danger in getting very fixed ideas about things. This is what God is doing and why he's doing it. Well, it may be, but it may not. And when we sing these words that Reginald Heber wrote, it actually reminds me that God is very different to me. He is set apart. He is holy. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Let me just read the remaining three verses of this hymn to close. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim, falling down before thee, who wert and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye may blind by sin, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity.
Thank you very much, Nick, Nicky Brown, for sharing this amazing and very encouraging word. Also, again, Jackie Elmore for this beautiful song, Our God is Holy God. May God bless you today, bless the rest of your day, everything you have to do today. I just wanted to pray for you now, and then we'll be closing our daily devotion now. Hope to see you tomorrow morning again. Yes. Stand. We are back here. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for this morning. Thank you for uh, the word Nick shared with us. Lord, you are holy. You deserve our worship. And, and that we thank you, Lord, for everyone who is connected with us now and then will be connected with us later on in our YouTube uh, Grosvenor Church channel, Lord. So I, I, I pray for a blessing day. Blessing day. Everything you have to do today, Lord. Help us and bless us and guide us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.